everybody and welcome back to my channel i am melinda j here here to do a commentary as well as provide you some uh, just a tad bit of updates if you have not came across them across it already in regards to the nashville shooting that happened so let's go ahead and dive into the article okay this is coming from npr and this is basically a timeline on what we know about the the sh shooting that happened at nashville elementary school okay <clears throat> and this article was updated as of today it reads nashville authorities on tuesday released graphic body camera footage showing the um the confrontation between police and an armed ass ass assailant who attacked the grade school monday morning six people including three children were who lives were taken away in the pow powing and the suspected attacker was also um taken out as well by police within minutes of the first call of an active pow pow or an active aggressor audrey hale who police identified as the aggressor bought seven seven weapons including three g words guns in the attack uh, and legally it was in the treatment for an emotional i'm gonna highlight this for emotional disorder okay so take a look at this right here andre hell who police identified as the aggressor bought seven weapons including the three weapons <clears throat> used in the attack legally and was in treatment for an emotional disorder according to nashville police chief john drake and uh said tuesday if that is not alarming i don't know what is okay that is deeply deeply alarming alarming excuse me okay Furthermore, to the article, the shooting occurred in the Covenant School, which is a private, a private Catholic school, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, a yes, a private elementary school on the grounds of Covenant. The shooting occurred at the Covenant School, a private school elementary on the grounds of Covenant Presbyterian Church in Nashville's Green Hills neighborhood. Our community is heartbroken, the school said in a statement on Monday. We are grieving tremendously, a uh, tremendous loss, and are in shocking, or in shock, coming out of terror that shattered our school and church. The massacre drew messages of sympathy from politicians, including President Biden and others across the country and it reignited calls for congress to do more to prevent school pow pows okay according to the national gun violence archive there has been 130 mass s words in the u.s so far this year okay so here what we know now about the nashville s word and those who passed away <coughs> how it unfolded authority says they received the first call of an active aggressor here we go at covenant school at 10 13 a.m local time hell a 28 year old from nashville area was a former student at the school authorities initially identified as hell as a woman but later clarified that hell used to be him from used him and he pronouns or he and him pronouns surveillance footage shows hell driving to the school in a honda fit dressed in camouflage style pants a white t-shirt and a red cap as well as a red vest okay a hell shoot uh hell lets loose out on the glass of a side door and crawls through the opening to access the building the S word, the aggressor, 
was armed with two AR style guns, a rifle and a pistol, as well as a handgun, investor said. Um, social police arrived at the school within minutes of the first 911 call. Shouts out to the police department on that one. And here you can see two community men members, and I'm pretty sure one of them is the mother consulting each other in this image. Body camera footage released Tuesday shows Officer Rex uh, arriving at the school, grabbing his weapon from the back of his vehicle and encountering a woman who appears to be a staff member. She tells him the kids are all locked down, but we have two kids that we don't know where they are. She also describes the layout of the school and says children are upstairs. Uh, Officer Rex had at least two other officers begin search the first floor of the school as the alarms blares. They check, check several rooms. I'm assuming that's supposed to be one check, but they check several rooms, including what appeared to be classrooms. Some doors are locked and others are other in the rooms are dark. Muffled, uh, muffled GSs can be heard in the background and Officer Rex and other officers rush upstairs to the second floor. Okay, the GSs grows louder and Officer Rex enters an atrium and the counters, <coughs> excuse me, and encounters the, the aggressor standing near a window. Of course, Officer Rex fires four times and the aggressor falls to the ground. And as you can see, um, a citizen, a local citizen makes a makeshift or goes to the makeshift memorial that's outside of the school to show her condolences for the victim that were involved and also the families that were involved as well. <clears throat> so uh, furthermore into the article, body camera footage from a second officer, Michael, shows him entering the school on the first floor with a group of other officers, Col Colazzo, and other officers reach the second floor where one says, we got one down as loud GSs are heard. He said just a few steps behind Officer Rex as the group enters the atrium after Officer Rex shoots Hale Officers rush to the suspect and Calizo or Calazo, excuse me, fires four more times. Officer Rex is a four-year veteran of the force and Officer Michael is a nine-year veteran. The officers shot and <clears throat> taken the life of Hale at 1027. That is 14 minutes after the emergency call. That's what I'm talking about. That's the type of action that we are, we as citizens are looking for when these cases are happening. Authority says Hale had been S-wording at responding officers through a second story window. Chief Drake said the two officers were trying to decompress and make sense of it all. This, the following S-word. Drake said he had also spoken with President Biden, who told him he intended to reach out to the officers too. The victims on Monday afternoon, police identified the three students and the three staff members whose lives were taken away. First, we have Evelyn at age nine. She was a third grader at Covenant School and her sister was a fifth grader, according to the Tennessean, a vigil of uh, excuse me, at the vigil, Evelyn's sister cried as she says, I don't want to be an only child. Oh my goodness. Haley Shrugs, age nine, was the daughter of Chad Shrugs and a and the senior pastor of Covenant Presbyterian Church, according to CBS News. William Kenny, who is age nine, and then there's Cynthia Peak, who is age 61, as a substitute teacher, according to authorities. There's Catherine Coates, age 60, was identified on the school website as head of Covenant School. Mike Hill, age 61, worked as a janitor at the school, police said. And from my understanding, when the act, active aggressor was going walking towards the school and was 
um, basically shattering all the windows using his weaponry. That's how the janitor had got hit there. A police spokesperson said Tuesday that investigators had no evidence that any of the victims were specifically targeted. The investigation, police say they don't know yet of the motive of the aggressor. The investigators were reviewing writings by Hale, who had attended the Covenant School and had interviewed the suspect's parents. Chief Drake said during a Tuesday press briefing that the shooter had already had legally purchased seven firearms from the five, five local gun dealers so it was seven guns with five dealers so she went to five different dealers to or he, excuse me he went to five different dealers to get these weapons three of those weapons were used in monday's attack so he was about to do some more action or what according to drake Hale's parents thought Hale shouldn't own any weapons and believed that he sold his only gun. They also told police that Hale was under a doctor's care for emotional disorder. The aggressor apparently also had detailed maps drawn of the school that identified entry points. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, the latest update as of now is that the besides the video footage of the police going in and taking the aggressor out, but also the latest update is that the aggressor went to five different dealerships or dealers to purchase seven firearms to as well as being or under doctor's care for an emotional disorder that's insane my thoughts about this situation first things first is if there is not a mental health portion on the background checks because i don't know how the background checks are ran on whether they look on your medical history or your mental health history on that or better yet that I, I, well I'm pushing it when I'm saying the medical history of your family but definitely the the mental health history the mental state of health history if they don't have that included in the background checks I think y'all should go ahead and reevaluate that I've already sounded the alarm before um, when it comes to education as a matter of fact that was part about my second video if not my first couple of videos at the very very beginning of me explaining how the school systems are just going down educational wise with the curriculum with all the tests that are unnecessary yeah i already sounded the alarm on that now this is gonna be my part two of sounding the alarm when it comes to the school system I don't know what happened to the funds that was released in the panoramic during the panoramic if, the, if it was used wisely was to uh, yes of course provide technology for the, for the kids who don't have it at their homes or wi-fi at their home so they can do their homework and tend to class um yeah that would be one of the things but the other thing should have been to amp up the security whether you are public school private school as well as a school of religion okay at this point the school might we, there needs to be a budget on security uh there are some schools or majority of the schools they have resource officers and depending on the size of the school and how many students are enrolled in that school it probably determines how many resource officers are being hired there as well but at the same time some of those schools be so big that hey whenever stuff do happen 
it's going to be hard for them to get to that location or it's going to take them a little bit longer to get to that location because the school is so darn big. So uh, hopefully there's like more than one or two resource officers at these large capacity schools. Now, um, again, back to getting a budget for security purposes. Since the, since the aggressor shot through the glass, in order to get in because uh from my understanding i believe most of the active shooters or the shootings that happened this year or in past years used to be past students and of course when you've been in the school for so long of course it's embedded in your brain of the layout of the school as well uh, um so yeah there ne- there ne- definitely needs to be some set aside funds for security because now either you all have to establish some bulletproof windows or some steel doors so, and then have a camera outside so you'll see who is going to walk up in this building because that was scary right there for this particular person to shoot through the windows and make their way in and then also as well the another thought that came into mind when i when this was breaking yesterday was okay is it possible that they applied to the job and got rejected did they had a bad experience with the school to where they it led to resentment and no one was there to basically hear them out or they faced rejection for so much to where they took it out on innocent people. There's just so many things to look out for, but it's the simple fact that why you got to take it out on the children? Why you got to take it out on the kids? They are innocent. And at this point, there really needs to be some action in regards to the shootings that are happening. It's like, every either every other day or every week is is like traumatized to monetize traumatized to monetize traumatized to normalize traumatized to normalize well i'm getting tired of being traumatized and to get normalized because it's getting ridiculous at this point there definitely again there definitely needs to be some action at this point Yes, there could be prayers. We can pray. We can pray and we can pray. But if there's no action set forward to making some things change along the way, then where is it to gain? Okay. Like the old saying goes, faith without work is is D-E-A-D. Well, now the prayers have been out. It's time to put in that action at this point. You see everyone else across the world protesting. You got France protesting because they are trying to get what is theirs. You got Israel. I seen another YouTuber, Brainways, mentioning Israel is uh, have been protesting for 10 days or 10 months, one of those. And the citizens are not having it as well. So us as Americans, we need to be banding together. And we I'm not saying take away the firearms, but there definitely needs to be some stricter guidelines to obtain these items and go through a routine process of re renewing and retesting the knowledge that you are that the knowledge that you'll gain from having these these weapons they are for protection at at a last resort okay they are a last resort item okay not an in all or be, be all item okay so at the end of the day like yo this this is this is ridiculous you this is ridiculous i i really just don't have anything else to say this is I said what I need to say. Y'all, but we got to make the change. 
and that goes by a whole lot of dealings okay we need more parent interaction in schools so you can so your voice can be heard besides on an individual basis via your social media account but parent interaction into schools joining ptas joining ptos and see them what we can do to help our schools become safer for our kids at the end of the day because um in no time it's gonna be homeschooling at this point because people don't know how to act these days all right but other than that i'm gonna leave y'all to it i'll see you guys in the next one i'm sending my um loving healing and strength energy to the families that are involved 